How's it going guys? My name is Oliver. Today I want to talk about virtual assistants. So more specifically, when should you hire one? And also when you hire them, what exactly should they be doing? What's the first thing that you need to be outsourcing in your agency? I'm not going to drag this video on and make it super complicated and talk about 20 different things. I'm just going to get straight to the point. So my personal point of view on virtual assistants, I think they're a must have for any successful agency. But the important thing to keep in mind is that if you yourself don't know how to do the thing that you want to outsource, you cannot hire a virtual assistant for that. All right, because virtual assistants need to be trained. They don't just come in a Christmas uh, package and they're all ready to work and they know exactly what to do and they'll boost your income by an extra 20 grand per month just magically like that. All right, they're very effective. You can leverage them. But in order for them to be successful, you yourself need to know what you're going to be outsourcing. So what are the first things you should be outsourcing? Um, I'm going to kind of separate media buyers and virtual assistants. So media buyer is something that I would personally hire from as soon as I start. Okay. When it comes to virtual assistants, the first thing that I would outsource is the prospecting. All right. You want to focus on things, activities that can make you money. If by outsourcing this thing, you will end up making more money, you do it right away. And one common mistake that I see, actually two mistakes. First one is that people, when they hire a virtual assistant for their um, their prospecting, them themselves have no idea what works and what doesn't work. They're not even able to sign on a client for themselves. Often enough, what people will do is they'll watch these videos, they'll say, oh, hire this $3 per hour virtual assistant and they'll book you 100 meetings per month. But the only reason why they're able to book those 100 meetings per month it's because the person who hired them trained them and told them exactly what to do and they gave them a very good framework and if you yourself don't have that framework how do you expect to replicate a successful strategy if you yourself don't have a successful strategy it does not make sense you only hire a virtual assistant for the prospecting once you yourself know what works and what doesn't work once you have a successful framework then you can replicate it with a virtual assistant and the second mistake is that when people do that, when they outsource the prospecting, what, are, what they typically do is that they're like, oh, I have someone who's doing the DMs for me or the cold calling for me, so I don't have to do it anymore. All right, that's wrong. That is not good. You should not see it as like someone replacing you, but rather a something that can multiply your, your, your efforts. Imagine you had two people doing full-time cold calling for you or full-time cold DMing, all right? You are always, most of the time, going to be um, the best person to do the work, okay? Especially when it comes to out the, the prospecting. As a business owner, you have to be very good at this part, and you probably are the best if you hire a virtual assistant. So if you're the best, why would you remove yourself from the process and just put everything on the virtual assistant? It doesn't make sense. So two things to consider when you hire a virtual assistant. First, you want to hire one if they're going to end up making you more money in the long run. Okay, so most of the time it's prospecting. You only hire a virtual assistant to do the prospecting once you yourself have found a successful framework or you have someone that can teach them a successful framework. Okay, they, they need to be trained on what works and what doesn't work. They won't magically get you clients just like that. That's not how it works. And once you hire the virtual assistants, Unless you're booked with meetings and you physically don't have enough time to do the prospecting yourself, you prospect with the virtual assistant. You guys are a team. You're doing it together. Okay. And until you reach a point where you don't have enough time to do it yourself because you're so busy with clients, you're so busy with meetings and stuff like that, you, you also do the prospecting. Okay. Your number one goal right now is to get clients and grow your business. Nothing else is more important than that. And the number one thing that's going to lead towards reaching that goal is the prospecting. So you do the prospecting, virtual assistant does the prospecting and you start booking meetings. So that's going to be all for today's video. It's a short one, straight to the point. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, but this is something that's very important and it's a common mistake that I see with many people. Okay. They're going to, they, they don't want to hire a virtual assistant as soon as they start but them themselves have no idea what to do and what works and what doesn't work. So how do you expect to have a virtual assistant that's going to be actually performing and be successful? All right, doesn't make sense. So be careful, do your homework, uh, train your virtual assistants, and don't make this mistake. All right, so I hope this video was useful, and we'll see each other on the next one. Bye-bye.